biological magnification we all know that bacteria viruses and insects attack the plants quite often if these pests and insects are not controlled they make the plants weak and sometimes even they may kill the plant that is why in agricultural fields plants are sprayed with chemical pesticides and insecticides these pesticides may enter the food chains and cause many problems now let us see how these poisonous chemicals enter the food chains the pesticides enter the plant bodies in two ways one when the pesticides are sprayed the leaves absorb the pesticides into the bodies of the plant two the pesticides that fall on the ground mixes up with the soil and are absorbed by the plant roots along with water and minerals sometimes the pesticides that are mixed in the soil seeps down and contaminates the groundwater sometimes due to heavy rains and floods these pesticides reaches the water bodies like ponds and rivers then these pesticides and insecticide residues enter the bodies of aquatic plants and animals of that pond in this way these chemical pesticides and insecticides enter the food chains if a pond is contaminated by pesticides and insecticides these chemicals enter the bodies of aquatic plants and animals present in that pond the amount of pesticide residue increases if we go up in a food chain let us see how it happens in a polluted pond the pesticides enter the bodies of the aquatic plants from the same pond a snail may eat lots of such polluted plants in its lifetime so these poisonous chemicals enter the bodies of the snail then the chemical deposits in the body of the snail are greater than the chemical deposit in each of this plant now if fishes eat such polluted snails in a very large quantity in their lifetime then these fishes get more toxic chemical deposits into their bodies if we consider the next organism in this food chain is man we know man usually stays at the top of the food chain if a man consumes such contaminated fish in large quantity all the toxic chemical residues present in the bodies of the fish enters the body of that man in this way large amounts of pesticide and insecticide residues get accumulated and deposited in our bodies here the amount of pesticide residue in the first level of the food chain that is in the aquatic plant is very low but the amount of pesticide residues increases progressively from one tropic level to next tropic level and the concentration of pesticides is magnified at the final level this phenomenon is called biological magnification let's see the definition of biological magnification when harmful substances become more concentrated as they move up in the food chains posing greater risk to animals at higher tropic levels including humans this is called biological magnification every day we use many food ingredients like rice wheat sugar milk meat and vegetables all these things we source from either plants or animals pesticide residues from these ingredients enter our body even though we wash our food ingredients thoroughly and even though we cook them properly we cannot completely remove the pesticide residues from them unfortunately our body cannot detoxify these chemical residues completely our body cannot excrete them also hence they remain in our body and causes various health problems this is all about the biological magnification and its impact on our health ozone layer Ozone depletion is one of the important environment problems we are facing now. Let us know about the formation and depletion of ozone layer. Oxygen and ozone both are made up of oxygen atoms, but they both differ a lot in their properties. Oxygen is made up of two oxygen atoms and its chemical formula is O2. Ozone is made up of three oxygen atoms and its chemical formula is O3. oxygen is a life saving gas it is very essential for the survival of the aerobic organisms on the earth whereas ozone is a deadly poisonous gas but it protects us from the harmful uv radiation of the sun overexposure to this uv radiation can cause skin cancer in humans 
oxygen is present in atmosphere but ozone is found at the higher levels of the atmosphere that is 15 to 40 kilometers above the surface of the earth how this ozone is formed when the uv radiation of the sunlight hits the oxygen in the atmosphere then the oxygen molecules split into oxygen atoms now the split free oxygen atoms combine with oxygen molecules and form ozone molecules this is how the ozone is formed now there is a problem to this ozone layer there is a gradual thinning of the ozone layer present in the upper atmosphere due to certain reasons this thinning of ozone layer is called ozone depletion the decline of ozone in the atmosphere was identified by various scientists since 1980 the main reason for the decline of ozone is a chemical compound called chlorofluorocarbon cfcs are used in the manufacture of air conditioners refrigerators fire extinguishers and spray cans in 1987 United Nations Environment Program UNEP made an agreement with all the countries to stop the usage of CFCs. Now it is mandatory that any company in the world cannot make refrigerators with CFCs. Not only CFCs, nearly 100 types of other gases also contribute to the depletion of ozone. So, reducing the usage of this kind of gases helps to protect the ozone layer. The next environmental problem is garbage. Managing the garbage we produce. In our daily life, we throw different kinds of waste. In that waste, there may be some vegetable waste, leftover food, papers, plastic covers, disposable plates and cups, plastic bottles, old clothes, etc. You might have observed that the garbage vehicle collects the garbage in two separate categories. One, biodegradable waste. 2 non biodegradable waste first let us see what biodegradable items are if you observe the leaves that fall in the soil they slowly mix up with the soil in few days do you know the reason the bacteria present in the soil decomposes the leaves in the same way any animal is dead and its body lies in the soil the bacteria present in the soil decomposes its body what is decomposition The bodies of living things are made up of complex organic molecules. Converting these complex organic molecules into simple molecules is called decomposition. Bacteria have special enzymes in their body. With the help of these enzymes, bacteria can do the decomposition. So bacteria can decompose the wastes and dead remains of plants and animals. They can also decompose the things that are made with plant or animal ingredients. like food paper natural fiber clothes leather etc so this kind of substances are called biodegradable materials the substances that are broken down by biological processes are said to be biodegradable materials but if you throw plastic bottles in the soil can they be decomposed by bacteria no because if an object has to be decomposed the microorganisms should have necessary enzymes to decompose it but microorganisms do not have the enzymes to decompose the items like plastic nylon etc so this kind of synthetic materials do not get mixed up with soil for a very long period of time this kind of materials are called non biodegradable materials disposable plates spoons cups polythene covers plastic bottles synthetic clothes glass all these are examples of non biodegradable materials due to the changes in our lifestyle we are generating a lot of garbage in olden days people used it to prefer paper cardboard grass such items for packing but now we are using synthetic materials like plastic polythene for packing purpose day by day the usage of non biodegradable materials is increasing This increase in the usage of non-biodegradable items leads to so many environmental problems. Then what is the solution for this problem? The solution is we have to reduce, reuse or recycle the non-biodegradable items. Reduce, reuse, recycle is a mantra that promotes environmentally friendly practices to minimize waste 
and conserve resources. It's a set of principles aimed to sustainable living and waste management. Reduce. Reduce focuses on minimizing the generation of waste by using fewer resources and producing less overall waste. For example, using reusable bags. Instead of using single-use plastic bags, carry a worn reusable bag for shopping. 2. Using energy-efficient appliances. Use energy-efficient appliances and light bulbs to reduce energy consumption. Next one, reuse. Reuse involves finding new uses for items to extend their lifespan and reduce the need for constant production of new goods. For example, containers and jars. Reuse glass jars and containers for storage rather than buying new ones every time. Recycle. Recycling is the process of converting used materials into new products, reducing the need for raw materials and energy. Example, paper recycling. We can recycle paper products like newspapers, cardboard and office paper to reduce the demand for fresh paper pulp. In the same way, plastic recycling. Many types of plastics can be recycled to produce new plastic products, reducing the reliance on virgin plastic production. By following the principles of reduce, reuse and recycle, individuals and communities can contribute to a more sustainable and environmentally friendly lifestyle, helping to preserve natural resources and reduce the negative impact of waste on this planet. This is all about our environment. Thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to Great Booster channel. Press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Check the description to find links of other useful videos. Check the end screens for our new videos.